and welcome back to today's video. Today I'm going to be going over my FTP, otherwise known as my functional threshold power, and how I've improved it from 214 watts at just the beginning of November to now at 273 watts, and that is just 11 weeks. So I'm going to give you a few tips which have massively helped me over the last few weeks and ones which have massively improved my power output and actually my stamina as well during my cycling. So I want to start off with a brief overview of how I actually got into cycling. If you didn't know, if you don't already follow me on my channel, I'm actually doing an Ironman triathlon and no, I haven't done any type of Ironman or any type of triathlon before. So I guess you could say, yes, I am a beginner. Before I got my bike in September, I do believe it was now, I hadn't really done any type of road cycling. Obviously I'd ridden, you know, the odd BMX and my mountain bike, you know, going to school and riding on a bike when I'm a kid, but no actual experience in any type of road cycling whatsoever. So I guess you can say, as I do say to my clients, because I'm a personal trainer, when you first start anything, I do understand that yes, obviously you're going to get some results quicker because you're going from nothing to something. But anyway, I got my bike in September time. So that is just over five months ago, I do believe now. So like I said, I am a beginner. And the first few weeks of me actually getting my road bike, I didn't have Swift. I went out on a few cycles, but again, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have a GPS, didn't have a power meter. I think I just got Zwift after two weeks. So I wasn't doing any type of structured training whatsoever. So like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to get some time on the bike. And then I researched online what are some good training plans to actually follow before I actually get into my now Ironman structured training program. Something which I could just improve my cycle on because obviously I was a complete beginner. I just needed something to give me some type of plan to get better at. And that's when I found on Zwift, I do believe it was the build me up plan and at the beginning of the build me up plan it did have an FTP test for me to do and I had heard of the FTP test but I've never obviously done one I'd heard they were hard obviously I knew it was like a fitness test and obviously depending on which one you do you know the 20 minute test the ramp test or the full hour I obviously knew whichever one I was going to do was going to be difficult so for my first one I didn't end up doing the 20 minute test and because I've never done an FTP test before I didn't really know how to pace myself and like I said I'd had no real experience so I remember looking at the you know on Zwift where it shows your power output, your cadence, heart rate, and all the other stats. I didn't really know what I should have been looking at and what range I should have been in. I guess you could say when I did do it, I was going in blind, so I didn't really have a number at all to aim for. So I will talk about it in a bit when I've done my second FTP test. Obviously, I did have a number to go for, but going back to my first one, I didn't have a number to go for whatsoever. So I remember doing the, I think it was 20 to 30 minute warm up, whatever they do on Zwift to get you to do before you do your actual 20 minute. And then I do remember that the 20 minute test was pretty brutal to say the least. I did do a 5k test a couple of weeks ago and I can equate it to that. It was really difficult, especially when I didn't know how to pace myself whatsoever. So I remember at the start of the FTP test on the 20 minute one, I think it does do it on the ramp one as well, is to stay in between that 85 to 95 on the cadence. And I think that was a good indicator for me because before reading that on the actual test day, I didn't know at all even, I don't even think I knew what cadence was. All I knew was that I needed to pedal as hard as I could. So anyway, I remember 10 minutes gone by and it being pretty tough. And then the last five to 10 minutes, I remember just sending it and just giving it the big one. And I did end up coming out with 216, 216 watts, which I do think I'm 73 kilo. So I do think that equates to three watts per kilogram. And obviously I didn't really know the stats before. I didn't have the numbers to go to shoot for, like I said before, but I do believe this is pretty average for a beginner just getting into cycling. And then 11 weeks go by and then I do my second FTP test. And the reason I've done this FTP test two weeks ago if you've seen my video of it I will put it up on the screen now a little brief clip from the actual video of me doing it I have got another upload of that a few uploads ago I did actually upload the full ram test if you want to go back and watch it after this video and I ended up getting 273 watts 273 watts which if I'm totally honest I was very happy with because obviously I knew my previous FTP was 216 I was pretty much shooting for anything around 240 230 240 I wasn't really expecting anything above 250 watts if I'm totally honest and yes this FTP test was done through the ramp method and it's essentially like the bleep test for the FTP test if you haven't done it before. Compared to the 20 minute test, which one's harder? I'd probably say the 20 minute test is slightly harder purely because you've got to think about pacing. Whereas the ramp test, you know, it just tells you the power which you need to hit and you just do it. And you just go until you can't do it anymore. So it's a lot more simplified. Whereas like I said, the 20 minute version is a lot harder because you've got to think a little bit more about pacing. Whether you can get a better test on the ramp or the 20 minute, I suppose it all depends 
on your strengths. For me, for me being a complete beginner, I didn't really have any strengths to know of whatsoever. So getting on to the main topic, how have I actually improved my FTP from 216 all the way up to 273 watts in just 11 weeks? So tip one and what helped me the most is zone two rides. So what I mean by zone two rides, if you're an experienced cyclist, you probably already know this, but it's the same with running or any other type of cardio endurance work is that zone two should be all easy paced work. So ever since doing that first FTP test, I've been doing a lot of easy rides, otherwise known as zone two rides, where my heart rate doesn't really get above 145, which is around 75% of my maximum heart rate. So a lot of the rides I'm doing are at an easyish pace. I'm not binning myself. I'm not really exerting myself too much. So I'm, I'm fatigued and I can't complete my next workout um, to the maximum effort that I actually want to. So I was cycling in those 11 weeks, probably around three to four times per week. And I'd say, to be honest, pretty much all of them were zone two rides. I'd say on average around 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Some rides are even zone one where it was extra easy. But pretty much all my rides were just at a steady pace. And yes, on Zwift, it is a little bit boring because I think I've only actually been out on my bike a handful of times since getting it purely because it's winter here in the UK and the weather is less than ideal. The zone two rides on the bike, just getting my mileage in, build my aerobic base as well. So that's tip number one. And tip number two sounds a little bit cliche, but it's consistency. Every single week I've been riding at least three times per week. I said some, t I think some weeks it's even been six times, but of course going back to my last point, they've all been easy zone two rides. I haven't been exerting myself too much. So I've stayed consistent every week, on average four to five times every single week I'm getting on the bike and getting the miles in. So I'm increasing the volume, but not increasing the intensity too much. So I'm not burnt out or anything like that. And that's been a really big thing for me, zone two and just consistency. Sounds cliche, but gotta do it. Tip number three is cross training. And what I mean by cross training is doing other forms of exercise as well. Obviously, because I'm doing triathlon, I need to do cross training. I need to do running and swimming. So I do think incorporating the run and the swimming as well, it's helped massively just to build my aerobic base as well, which is obviously linked really well with the cycling. I'm just constantly building my aerobic base. So naturally my cardio and my stamina and my aerobic capacity is getting a lot better over time with consistency. And before getting into Ironman triathlon training, my background is more weight strength training. So I would say I've built up a lot of strength in my legs. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, doing a lot of squats, deadlifts, before you're doing any cycling, it's it's completely different, you know. I don't mean just because you do a lot of squats and deadlifts and you've done a lot of weight and strength training that you're immediately gonna be good at cycling because you're not, but it definitely helps. So with all the cycling, I'm still doing a lot of resistance workouts as well. I'm doing stuff like squats, split squats, hamstring dominant work like uh, Romanian deadlifts, glute work, so I'm building my leg muscles up as well as building them up through the cycle. So I think tip number three is cross training, getting some type of resistance training in to build the power in the legs and as well as doing another type of cardio cross training as well. So I think they are the three main tips which have helped me over the last three weeks increase my FTP from 216 to 273 watts, which I do believe that is now 3.7 watts per kilo. Like I said, I'll put the stats up on my screen. I'm five foot 11, 73 kilo, and I've only been cycling around five to maximum six months now. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions you've got, put in the comments below. And if you want to join me on the journey to the Ironman 2021, hopefully it still goes ahead July 4th. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you very much.